pleasant good morning for one and all. Uh, good morning, Cornerstone family from Redeemed Fundamental Baptist Church. Uh, pleasant good morning to you all. Just want to give God praise and thanks for the opportunity uh, to share with you the word of God and thank God for Pastor Brad and for the opportunity that he has given me this morning uh, to share God's word. I trust that everyone is in good health. I pray by God's grace that you are serving the Lord. I trust by God's grace that the word of God would be a blessing and encouragement to your heart today. We want to thank God for, for you all and for the support that you have given to us uh, during these past months. Thank you for uh, the bus that you, uh, Pastor Brad, has loaned us over these couple months. Uh, it has been a great blessing and encouragement uh, to us and helping us reach a lot of people. And uh, for that, we want to give God praise and thanks uh, for you all. And uh, continue to pray for us here at Redeem as we continue to fight the good fight of faith as we will do for you all. And as we continue to keep our eyes open as things open up back very slowly in Trinidad and Tobago. We trust by in the near not too distant future that we'll be able uh, to have church as church ought to be. And we trust by God's grace as we minister the word of God as it goes through the airwaves. I trust that some life would be changed and challenged by the word of God. All right, so this morning as we take our Bibles and turn to the book of Joshua chapter number 7. Joshua chapter number 7, reading from verse number 1. <clears throat> Joshua chapter number 7, and reading from verse number 1. The word of God tells us, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zara of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. The men went up and viewed Ai, and there returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people but about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shibarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. The Bible tells us in verse number 10, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon, the, upon thy face? Joshua was before the Lord, pleading uh, before God's throne of grace, because they were defeated by this small company of men. The Bible tells us in verse 11, Israel had sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken off the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and disassembled also, and they have put it even amongst their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. Verse 15 tells us, And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he had transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he had wronged folly or wrought folly in Israel. The Bible tells us in verse number 18, And he brought his household man by man, and Achan the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, of the son of Zara, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, 
and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And the Bible tells us in verse number 25, And Joshua said, Why hast thou, tr thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. What a sad picture. What a sad sight. And by God's grace this morning, we will just touch on a couple of things as we look at the word of God, shall we look to God in prayer? Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your precious word. I pray, O oh Lord, this morning as we look into the perfect law of liberty. Lord, I pray as you expose our hearts, as you expose our life. I pray, Father, O oh Lord, that you would help us to take heed according to the word of God. I pray, O oh Lord, that your word would be, uh, that your word is quick and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, your word is yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Lord, and we want to thank you this morning for the opportunity, O oh Lord, to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have seen and are seeing, O oh Lord, every hidden thing in our lives. Lord, you have, Lord, you know our past, you know our present, and you know our, our future at the same time. Lord, it's absolutely impossible, Lord, to hide anything from you. Lord, this morning as we come before your throne of grace, even as you would direct us, O oh Lord, into your word, as we look, I take a little glimpse of the life of Achan, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we would be able to learn, O oh Lord, Father, some truths this morning from your precious word. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. May the Savior be highly exalted. May your name be highly magnified and uplifted at this time. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that is due unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This morning, as we, as we talk about uh, just a couple of things, as we look at the life of Achan, as we touch on his life just a little bit, uh, let me use as a, a, a title this morning, What's hidden in your tent? What's hidden in your tent? What's, may I say today, this, at this time, what's hidden in your tent can, can destroy the lives of others. What is hidden in your tent can destroy the testimony of the church. It can destroy your life and that of your family. As we look at and build a foundation by which to springboard this morning, as we look at Joshua, the new leader of this nation of Israel, there were some principles that, principles that Joshua needed if he were to successfully lead the people of Israel. If he were to be a successful leader of God's people, he needed to do three things basically as we would see in the text. He needed to continue to walk to the promised land. He needed also to visualize God's promises in verse 4. He needed also to meditate on the word the word of God. And the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, a very familiar portion of scripture to many. The Bible tells us, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So if Joshua were to be a good leader, a successful leader at that, Joshua needed to meditate on God's word, no doubt to memorize the words of truth. But as we look at this portion of scripture, he needed to continue to walk to the promised land. The Bible tells us in verse 1 and 2, every place of where the sole of your feet shall tread upon, the Bible tells us, as I said unto Moses, the Bible says that he would be with Joshua. So God wanted Joshua not to stop, but he wanted Joshua to keep on 
moving. He needed to continue marching forward. He needed co to continue going forward in order for God's purposes to be accomplished. God had given them the land, but no doubt the land of Canaan was a land that was going to be a land of many battles, a land that was be filled with many circumstances and problems. And Joshua needed by God's grace to keep on moving. So he needed to continue walking to the land that God has pro had promised to Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. And likewise, as Moses made the same promises to him, and now it has passed on to Joshua to continue walking. Not only he needed to continue the walk to the promised land, but he needed to visualize God's promises. The Bible tells us from the wilderness in verse 4, from the wilderness shall be your coast. So the God, the Lord God had given them uh, this massive piece of land, the land of promise. And Joshua needed to visualize God's promises. He needed to have it clear in his mind for direction and for dependability. He said, the Lord said to him, I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee in verse 5. So God's promises to Joshua is that he would not fail him. He will not forsake him. And Joshua needed to visualize God's promises because this was a land that was to be filled with opposition. And a land that is filled with opposition, no doubt he needed to keep his eyes focused upon the promises of the word of God. Because if he didn't, he would, his life would be topsy-turvy, he would lose focus, he would lose direction, he would become confused. And as a result, the nation of Israel could be defeated very easily. So as a leader, to be a successful leader in this army that God had called him to, Joshua needed to continue to march on forward. He also needed to visualize the promises of God that God had made to Moses and then to him. But thirdly, he needed to memorize the word of God. To memorize the word of God. The scripture, uh, the Bible tells us that God had spoken to Joshua and Joshua needed by God's grace to, to, to as he said to him, be strong be of a good courage and observe to do. Those are three watchwords that Joshua needed to have on his mind and to meditate upon these precious promises. And he needed to meditate upon these three watchwords. Be strong. In other words, God was telling him, be strong in spirit to fasten upon. Be strong in spirit. Fasten upon Joshua. Pull yourself together. Be strong in spirit. Not only physically, but you needed to be strong in mind. He also, told, he also told him, be courageous. In other words, Joshua, be alert. Be alert physically. Be watchful. Mentally, steadfastly minded. Be established. So God wanted Joshua to be strong in spirit, he wanted Joshua to be courageous or be alert physically and mentally. But he needed Joshua not only to be steadfast and courageous, but he needed him to be observant. He says, observe to do all that is written therein. To, to, to observe meaning he needed to hedge about as with thorns. The word suggests there to hedge oneself garrison oneself with a hedge of thorn lest anybody should come and be and be pricked by it he needed to hedge himself with thorns as it will garrison himself to protect himself but not only so but he needed to guard or to protect or to attend to be aware be aware of your circumstances take heed to yourself joshua not only to protect yourself not only to watch what is happening but look at yourself internally. Take heed internally. Take heed to yourself. And not only that, the word suggests also to look narrowly. In other words, peer in a little closer, Joshua. Take a little closer look at what's happening with the army. Take a little closer look what's happening with the people. Take a little 
take a little closer look at what's happening of your surroundings. Be on the alert. Be watchful. Be strong in spirit. Be courageous. Be alert. Be observant. Head yourself. Guard yourself. Circum walk circumspectly and look narrowly at the things that is before you. For these three watchwords will become a very important aspect in the life of Joshua. As him, as if he, he wanted to be a successful leader, and by extension, all of us as God's people, if we want to be successful in the army of God, we also need to be strong in spirit. We need to be very courageous and stay alert, and we need to be observant to do all that God has commanded us in his word to do. By God's grace, Joshua needed to do these things if he were to lead God's people into the land of promise, a land that was filled with many, many difficulties. Joshua, by God's grace, understood what it means to guard against sin. Sin is a very deceitful thing. And as we look at the life of Achan, we realize that this thing called sin could be very, very damaging, not only personally, but nationally as it applied to the nation of Israel or ecclesiastically as a church. And also it can have some eternal ramifications as well. I read of a story about the deceitfulness of sin. Someone says one of the largest freshwater turtles is the alligator snapping turtle. Found primarily in the southwestern US, USA, the, these massive turtles have been known to weigh up to about 250 pounds. They are carnivorous uh, turtles and uh, primarily they feed on fish. And, but they have been known to eat almost anything found in the water. The Amer Amer alligator snapping turtle relies on a uniquely deceitful method of fishing. The turtle will lie, the person said the turtle will lie completely still on the floor of the lake and with its mouth wide open at the end of the turtle's tongue is a pink, small, worm-shaped appendage. The turtle wiggles and its tongue so that it looks like a worm moving through the water. When the fish comes to eat the worm, the turtle close, uh, rapidly closes its jaw, trapping the fish so that it cannot escape. Similarly, so as a slapping turtle, lure and temptation comes in the guise of something desirable. It carries with it a destructive, has a destructive end for its prey. And if we see the end result of the temptation, we would also realize that what Satan does, that Satan gives us and baits the hook very, very easily. Satan knows that, and he very cleverly disguises the bait, but this bait is filled with deadly poison, so to speak. And he disguises this bait, and it looks very pleasurable and very enticing to the child of God. And as we go about our Christian life, and as we walk about, the Bible tells us that he walketh as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he gives and he dangles this bait and he knows our weaknesses, he knows our the times when we would are uh, most susceptible to fall and to, to stumble. And so by God's grace, he put things into our lives so that we'd be able to, eyes would be able to see it. It will look very attractive. It will look very beautiful. It will look very pleasurable. It will look very enticing. But the moment we partake of it, not too long after we begin to feel the squeeze and the pinch and the hurt and the pains of being involved into Satan's deadly games. Can I tell us this morning 
That's what's mm. hidden in your tent to destroy your testimony. To destroy the church. The Bible tells us a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Achan hid what was in his heart inside the tent. Be careful what you treasure in life. It will simply expose our hearts before the presence of God. The Bible tells us that the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. Notice the scripture tells us as you start off to read in chapter 7 verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass. One man committed a trespass in taking of the accursed thing. And the entire nation was held to account by God. The entire nation. Hiding the accursed thing is disastrous, both individual, nationally, but it affects us in three areas of life. It affects us personally. It will affect us nationally or ecclesiastically in our case today. And it will affect us sometimes eternally. Personally, how did this affect Achan? Verse 16 and verse 21. As you look a little bit at the life of Achan, he was hiding among the crowd. Verse 16 and verse 17 tells us about this guy Achan. The Bible tells us, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken and he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of the Zarites and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man and Zabdi was taken. So Achan was among everybody else. He blended in with the crowd. He, he was so disguised as an individual. He was pretending to keep the covenant in verse 15. He tell, the Bible tells us that Achan had transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he had wrought folly in Israel. So he was a covenant keeper. He was a person who was obedient to the laws of God as well. So he blended in very nicely. He was well camouflaged, well disguised. And he was doing what was seemingly right in the eyes of everybody else. But his heart was far from God. His heart was far from doing what was right and pleasing in the eyes of God. He just did it because he, it was the right thing to do. He do it because everybody else was doing it. That's why he did it. His heart was filled with worldliness. His heart was filled with carnality. And no doubt his, his family knew what he had done and nobody said nothing. After all, you can't blame, you might say, well, Achan was very guilty and sure he was, but notice that these people were coming from a very long, long journey. These people had a very rough life. Uh, these people didn't have clothes for a very long time, anything new, may I say, because they were going through the wilderness and God miraculously preserved their shoes and pre preserved their clothing so that it was, it, it held out for many years. No doubt they reached a certain place and his eyes popped out when he saw, the Bible says, a goodly Babylonish garment. He fell in love with the materialistic things that he didn't see for a very, very long time. So Achan was among the crowd. He was hiding among the crowd. He was pretending to keep the covenant. He was covetous. The Bible tells us in verse number 11. That Israel, that Israel had sinned and taken off the accursed thing. He has transgressed the covenant of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that Achan, when he was confronted, the scripture tells us in verse number 21, he says, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. He was covetous. Notice his words very carefully. When I saw... Among the spoils, a goodly Babylonish garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold, and 50, shekel, 50 shekels weight. Then I 
coveted them and hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver underneath it. So here is Achan. He saw it. He coveted it. Goodly Babylonish garment. Nice piece of silver. Man, he flipped when he saw it. Can you imagine he's coming out from this wilderness and he's, his clothes haven't, haven't been wrinkled. He had the same type, same clothing for about 40 odd years and he's moving through the wilderness and same shoes going all through and probably worn a little bit but it didn't burst it was still good God had miraculously preserved it God had miraculously preserved his clothing and I'm sure if Achan could just stop a little bit and think about it a little bit he would have realized that the same God who preserved his clothes who preserved his shoes who preserved the life his life it was the same God who was willing to provide for him for another 40 years for another 80 years and he didn't let he didn't have to to go after the worldly things he didn't have to covet after the things that did not belong to him it was something that God said not to touch it was the promise that God had made to them that if they do certain things that they would bring disaster upon themselves he challenged the authority of God he found himself in a lot of trouble so personally this guy Achan he, pra he, pra he, 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 he paraded like everybody else he was among the crowd he did, was doing what was right in the eyes of the individual but he had a very covetous heart that got him into trouble because having a covetous heart he started to lust after evil things the accursed things the bible calls it the accursed thing it was a curse because god said it was a curse and that's all that needed to be said God said it was a curse, don't touch it. God said it was a curse, don't look at it. God said it was a curse, bury everything. Don't touch it, don't take it, leave it alone. By God's grace, God has spoken to us as God's people and God wants us to live holy lives. God wants us to live lives that is pleasing and right in the sight. But many a time because of covetousness personally, we become very corrupt as God's people and we go after the things of this world and we bring a hurt to ourselves. We bring hurt to our families. We bring hurt to the church as we lost us after evil things. What kind of music you listen to? What kind of movies do you listen to? What kind of crowd do you line with? Do you hang with? The accursed thing. The Bible tells us come out from among them and be what? Separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. By God's grace, God wants to use his people in a tremendous way, especially in these days of covid where Christians are just going back in, in, in record numbers. In every church, as I speak to pastors, the, the crowd had, has drawn down. Believers are falling off the map. And the true ones will remain standing at the end of the day. Hold on by God's grace and go not after the things of this world. Don't lust after things. But keep your mind and heart focused upon the word of God. Personally, as an individual, be strong, be courageous, and be observant.